Okay, we are back with Ron Polk, and this time we'll be discussing the latest generation of his Polk Workbench, a portable yet full-sized work surface for builders on the go. Here's a time-lapse of Ron assembling the bench from start to finish. Now while Ron initially designed this purely for himself, the Polk workbench has become something of a DIY sensation, which we'll get to in just a bit. But first we're going to talk to Ron about the design. Ron, what generation of the workbench are we looking at? This one uh, is, is called the Polk Workbench 2. It's the second generation of the bench that I've made available to other carpenters. But prior to the original workbench, I had two iterations in developing the first bench. And prior to designing your own bench, what were you using as a work surface? Prior to that, I had used many uh, temporary benches over the years from the basic plastic sawhorses that you purchase at the lumber store with a sheet of three quarter inch plywood. And also uh, quite a few years I used a three foot by six eight door blank, just a hollow core door. Uh, for years and years that was my primary indoor or finished workbench. So what inspired you to design your own? The use, the use of those, those other benches. Uh, additionally, I purchased a, a few uh, commercially available benches and what I was finding is that benches were um, too heavy, too hard to set up, but primarily they were too small. To get a bench uh, for what I do in finished carpentry where I'm building cabinets, assembling cabinets, building fireplace uh, mantles and, and, uh, and large bookcases, I just needed a little more space. So I, I decided that the 4x8 was the size I needed. That was the, the minimum size that would work for me. And to do that, um, I had to use a full sheet of plywood. The problem with plywood is it doesn't stay completely flat, and then you end up uh, trying to put some strong backs or something on it to keep it stiff, and then it gets heavy and hard to move around. So, you know, the idea then to split it into two pieces that when put together functioned as one sort of started with that concept. And then uh, the, the other problem with workbenches is that they become collectors of everything on the job. So you, you need a place to set a tool, that's where you set it. You take off your nail bags, that's where you set it. You got a project you're working on, you set it on the bench. And then when you go to work on the bench, it, you have to unload the bench just to use it. So then the concept of having storage space, uh, usable space to set your tools down and your glue down and your, uh, you know, your screw bins and all those things beneath the bench while you're working. So they're, they're right there for you to grab, but they're not taking up space on your, on your uh, top. And tell us about the perforations on the work surface. Yeah, the perforations uh, are, are not original. They're bench dog holes. You'll find them on lots and lots of benches. I set them up uh, so they're four inch on center and they cover the entire uh, workbench surface. They allow me to clamp anywhere on the bench that's necessary. And I happen to use the Festool C-clamps, but they drop right in the holes and I can clamp down for gluing or if I'm gonna screw something together. And I can also attach uh, any number of fixtures that I build out of, out of uh, wood on the job just to hold things down or templates, guides, things like that. So that was the, the purpose of the, of the holes was, was just to be a clamping surface. And obviously to hold things like mantles and cabinets, the bench needs to be quite sturdy. So what made you opt for using half inch plywood rather than the three quarter inch? I decided that the design that I was working with more of a truss, uh, a box beam, I was going to get the strength from the engineering and not from the mass and that was intentional. I, I knew that building this box basically um, so that I could have an you know, inside usable space, I would not need the mass uh, that, that the, the half inch would be as rigid as the three quarter and that gives me the added benefit of weight. Can you tell us about the design thinking behind mounting the table saw to the end of the workbench? Instead of carrying a stand to hold it up and then working out an outfeed, um, I decided that 
with this uh, large bench already set up that it'd make a perfect outfeed. And then if I put it on the manufacturer stand right in front of the bench and use as an outfeed, I have to be concerned about getting exactly the same height. And also, um, if I'm working on a surface that's not uh, uh, level, or at least running at the same angle, um, then you end up with the table saw uh, surface not being plain or flush with, uh, you know, in plane with the bench or with the outfeed. So I, I realized that I needed to come up with some way to uh, mount the table saw on the bench so that the bench doubles as the outfeed and as the support. And so I just played around with uh, a lot of different ideas and came up with uh, just a couple of inexpensive pipes mounted inside of the workbench that just pull out and uh, a little mounting system out of the same half inch plywood attached to the saw so that I could just set the saw on the pipes without having to attach it. So it becomes an easy on, easy off, and very stable way to uh, hold my, my table saw. And the setup time is, is very minimized. Now, the earlier versions of the workbench did not contain a router table, but this one does. What made you decide to add it? I just like the table saw. It was one of those things where I'd have to carry a, another tool, another bench. And uh, since I, when I'm doing routing on a router table, I'm not doing other things. I'm not running the table saw or the miter saw. So I decided that since I already have the surface, I'd go ahead and just integrate in uh, a router table into it. And the, the router table that I integrated in is, is pretty common. It's very much like any uh, router table you can, you can purchase uh, on the market, only it's just integrated into this bench. And speaking of things that are on the market, in the next episode, we'll talk to Ron about how he discovered that he had inadvertently created a product design hit. I'm Rain No, signing off for Ron Paul and Core 77 TV.